I got mine. I hope you got yours too. <laughs> Thank everybody for. I want to just. Uh, oops, da, 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 da. Hi. <laughs> My name is Elma. I just want to thank everybody for coming back and hanging out with me for a little bit. I am new to this podcasting, vlogcasting. Um, so welcome. I will have mistakes. That is reality. There will be mistakes. There will be no editing. I have no time for that. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I am a singlish mother. I have three children and I work full time editing. Not so much in the stars right now. Maybe later. I don't know. But right now, no. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just can't. Um, I came back today. This is episode number three. And I just wanted to um, say thank you to all of my new subscribers. I have a good couple of new subscribers. And I appreciate you coming by and watching my video. And I hope that you enjoyed uh, the two videos that I had posted. <laughs> So I wanted to come by today to add to that content. Um, so I'm coming back from voting. I voted today. I exercised my civil right and I casted my vote today. I hope that you all did as well as I stated when I first opened up. Um, so now the wait begins, right? The wait begins <clears throat> to see what happens. The polls close at 9 o'clock and we'll see what happens, right? Okay. So, we're not here to discuss politics. We're here to discuss yarn. <laughs> because there's no politics in yarn unless you make it so. Yarn is yarn. You know, as the um, infamous infamous orange lady Gigi stated when you buy it who cares what you do with it either you knit with it or you crochet with it but it's yours the money to get it is green how you choose to work that yarn is your business you do what you do okay that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what I do whether I cuz you know I have plenty of string so whatever I do with that string is my business <laughs> Was I crochet it? I knit it. Um, I started doing, um, what's that, punch needling. That's another problem. I need yarn for that too. <laughs> so, you know, so there's a lot of issues going on as far as yarn. But it don't have to be. It's all beautiful. It's all wonderful. We just trying to live and do what we got to do. It's, it's, life is too short. We in a pandemic make no sense but we are literally in a pandemic we are just now voting for united states president let's hope that that drama comes at end tonight um and yarn is just right now just about some kind of semblance of peace and i'm here to promote peace i'm all for peace i'm all in for peace i have enough drama in my life and i don't need i don't need too much more so I can find peace in yarn, I would gladly take that on. All right, so let's get started. I have a couple of um, whips, a couple of finished products, projects, and some um, happy mail, and also a little yarn haul from, is it both? I think it's from Michaels and Knit Crate and Barrett World, Barrett World Co., which is, um, Susan B. Anthony's company. So we'll get into that. So what do you what do y'all want to start? You start with the finished objects, I guess. So that's what everybody else does, right? So we'll do the finished objects first, right? So these are this um <clears throat> podcast is gonna be uh knit heavy. Alright, I have only two things. One, two, three, four, six. Yeah, I only have two things that are crochet. So unfortunately, um I'm sorry, crocheters. No, no side eye, no shade, no nothing like that. Um, it's just that it's um, knit heavy. I'm sorry. Please don't feel away. I love my crochet. I'm looking down. I'm just trying to find. Um, I should have did this earlier. 
I understand now better why uh, things are said as they are said. <laughs> because content is a thing. Looking for content, trying to make content and all of that. It's a true thing. So I get that now because part of why I took a little while to get back on <clears throat> was because I didn't feel like I had content to show, you know, so, excuse me. So now I'm back because of that. So this first hat I want to show you was a test knit that I did by uh, Crystal Hyatt from Millie's Knit, Millie's Knit Designs. And this is called the Grange Hat. This is called the Grange Hat. Right? Isn't that beautiful? I love that. So the blue is um, Craft Smart from Michaels, Michaels brand Craft Smart. And the speckled is Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. Um, hmm. I forgot to look at the name of the Hobby Lobby yarn. I will try my best to post it um, in the description box below. But this is the Grange hat. <clears throat> okay. I love that. So it's blue on purpose because I'm making it, making um some more hats to put in for the Hat Not Hate campaign, which is, um, which I've been uh, doing hats for Hat Not Hate all this year because, um, what else was there to do? We was home for like six months. <laughs> I'm gonna put on my glasses because it's age. I'm putting them on because of age, child. Age. Um, there's another hat. Again, forgive me. I did not plan ahead and find the the um designer's name earlier. So I do apologize. Give me few minutes please I'm so sorry here we go so this now this hat is called this is hat is rather is by crystal T knits crystal T knits you see that the top I did helical knitting at the top that's how I got those stripes up top there you know and then her pattern calls the top uh, to be solid, but this is Hobby Lobby yarn again. I got this at the uh, clearance, and that's those three um, acrylic uh, cakes put together. I still got ends to weave in because of all the color changing, um, but I had wanted to use the bulk of that yarn in this hat, you know, and I really like how it came out, you know. Uh, this. <clears throat> this pattern is called, I have it in my knit companion. This pattern is called the Mosaic Checkers Hat. Mosaic Checkers Hat. And this is also going into Hat Not Hate, my Hat Not Hate um, collection. All right. Maybe on one of my um, next podcasts, I'll go through <clears throat> the Hat and I Hate uh, collection and let you know and let you see what I have so far. Okay, so this last hat is by my friend, my good friend, Rachel M. Reese. And this is called the Maybray Hat. Maybray. M-A-B-R-E-Y. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, how to pronounce that. Maybray, I'm just pronouncing it phonetically. <laughs> okay, and this um, is also a blue, uh, navy blue from Red Heart. Red Heart's uh, soft navy, and this is um, Red Heart also. I believe it's Glamour, Glamour Me, or Beautiful Me, something like that for Red Heart. And it's just, it's so pretty. I love that. I love how the colors come out with the color work. It's very nice, you know? So that is also for Hat Not Hate. Those three hats. The next thing I'm going to show you is 
But I keep telling um, Kim the Crafty Nomad to make as her next sweater. <laughs> this is my first completed knitted sweater. I did this as a knit along with um, the best, best day ever crafting podcast. They had a knit along for the Felix sweater. Um, was it last year? I think it was mid to late last year or I think it was mid to late last year. I don't remember exactly. But, oh, this came out so nice. You know, and this color is, um, this is a wool spun, Lion Brand wool spun yarn. I want to call this, what is it named again? Y'all won't tell me what, what it's named right now. That's all right. You're going to tell me your name later. But <laughs> I love how this sweater came out. Again, that's my first um, completed knitted sweater, which says that I started a sweater already that um, <clears throat> I did not complete because of whatever issues, you know. But I love this sweater, sweater and it's so squishy and soft. And Lion Brand Wool Spun. I don't know why they got rid of that yarn. That's just such a nice yarn. And I have yarn to make the uh, cardigan. So I plan to cast on the cardigan <coughs> in, in this very near future. What I love, the detail that I love is this um, eyelet detail here in that sweater. I love that. I love that, love that, love that. You know, Arthella, who is also... Um, the other half of um, the best day ever crafting, she took those eyelets and she even took it down the side, which is something I was planning to do when I cast on for my um, for the cardigan, the Felix cardigan. I think that that'll be such a nice detail going down the side of the sweater. You know, love that sweater. <clears throat> the next sweater is my most recent um, completion. This was a test knit for um, Jacqueline C. Slack. And this is called the Ursina. This is the lighter weight. This is in uh, a royal blue. This is the lighter weight sweater to the Ursa, which is a um, bulky weight or a size five um, yarn. And I, I just love this sweater. I love how the brioche worked up. The brioche, it was like magic. It's like you just knit in and you did, um, every row you put one stitch, you know, which was interesting. Every row you did one stitch to get this triangle to happen. So you did one stitch every row and that's all you did to change the stitching. One stitch every row just to um, change that. This yarn I got from, um, the crafters box the crafters box is also like um it's like a monthly subscription and it does yarn things it does um wax candle it does cement stuff paper stuff leather stuff you know so it's like a whole bunch of different uh crafts and when they had the yarn they had um what was it uh this was in tony tony lipsy from tl Yarn Crafts, when she had her box, that's when I had um, actually first purchased a uh, box for them to do her uh, shawl that was being um, offered that month as the craft that month. Uh, so I had all got that box with that shawl in it. And the color that I got was like a dark uh, charcoal gray with a lighter gray. And that yarn is so soft and so nice. So I was like, what? I need a sweater in this. So I got me a sweater quantity <laughs> from those people for that yarn, you know. And then she came out with the headband. So with the headband, you did not have to buy the yarn the way it was sequenced for the shawl. It was different. So you could buy, if you wanted 10 skeins for... 10 handbags. Who's questioning that? Nobody. So you buy what you want and they mail it to you. <laughs> so this was part of that. This was actually, this is the back. This was actually um, the 
um, yarn for the headband that they were offering, but I said I'm good. I want this. I'm going to try this. I don't know. If this, I don't know if it's here. Child, this, um, trying to anger yourself properly is a thing. But it's, uh, it's going to get better as time goes on. I'm not going to worry myself because I am a nurse. I am not. I am not. And I repeat, I am not a production, TV production person. So this is real life. Excuse me. I'm moving stuff. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm moving stuff and talking. And that's what I'm accustomed to doing when, I, when you got children. You move and talk. Excuse me for being out of frame. Stuff fell on the floor. All right. So <clears throat> that is that sweater, the Ursina. And that act, that pattern is now out. You know, and I would suggest that you go ahead and do it. Now, in her pattern, Jacqueline has um, bust darts. Right. So in this sweater, I did the bust darts because I never, I've never done that before. Right. So I just wanted to see does it make that big of a difference in the sweater you know so my girls are not um small you know but they're not like all over the place either you know so i'm not in anybody's contest where the girls come into play but i said let me try the bust darts because i don't know i've never had that before so the bust darts added more width right to allow for stretch <laughs> I did not need that, you know, so that was um, my bad because I, I just didn't know, right? I wanted to try it, but now I know for next time, should I, because uh, I think I want to uh, repeat this pattern without the bust darts because I really enjoyed this pattern. I enjoyed that brioche portion and this um, center um, brioche line down that center. Oh, that is so that's just such a fun detail. I love that, you know? So I want one where the neckline, because right now, because of the bust darts, the neckline is uh, wide or and longer. But I still wear the sweater, but I wear it with a shirt underneath because I don't want to expose all of my cleavage like that. I don't think that's right. <laughs> all right. So when I do that sweater again, I'll keep you informed and I will... Um, not do the bus starts this time around the last one is a crocheted sweater i did that sweater out of one and then i still got instant weaving i did that sweater out of one karen cake for the karen cake challenge you know and that pattern is by simply pam they call this a shark bite that that's a shark bite is what i'm told that elevation here it's a sharp bite but that's one don't look at my ends don't look at my ends people all right don't don't look at my ends just look away look away from the ends child. don't look at the ends pay attention to, <laughs> pay attention to the finished object don't look at the ends the ends are not what this is about all right this is about the finished object all right good let's keep it in perspective <laughs> all right so this now is the sleeve and this is the rest of the sweater. That's the body. It fits so nice. And that Karen Simply Saw. Karen, excuse me, the Karen Anniversary Cake. I believe this is Blueberry Bash. That just came out so nice and did so nice. I wish, you know, that they had the Karen Anniversary Cake in solid sweaters too. In solid colors rather. Solid colors also. I would probably have more. <laughs> solid colors more than what I got already I don't need more it's all right I don't need more screen people oh lord Jesus help me but if they did have some solid colors I would have some <laughs> so again this is by this is a pattern by simply Pam and it's called the Danielle sweater and it's such a nice sweater and I do have bulky weight um yarn this side I was just thinking, um, I have bulky weight yarn and I may make that over in a solid color because I really like that sweater. It's a nice sweater. It's soft. 
when y'all block acrylic I just wanted to um, know what y'all do because I block acrylic using steam you know because it's plastic and um, I hear some people say they block acrylic wet blocking it and I don't know I have you know I can I can understand washing acrylic to get it to be soft but even at, like like for my um, just feel festive shawl for example I put that in the machine because it was red heart uh, ombre right and I pinned it out just like I would any other garment right but although it's dry now my um, inkling is to still go back and steam it because again it's acrylic and washing it doesn't break down the plastic steaming it melts the plastic and you get a better finished product with acrylic um, yarn so just a word to the wise or just a little bit of foolish advice um, acrylic yarn does well with steam blocking I think to me to me in my opinion it gives the fabric the best drape and uh, it, it allows that fabric to um, be what you are looking for it to be it takes away that stiffness that acrylic tends to have once it's done worked up all right so there you go that is the um the PSA <laughs> the PSA for today all right not only election day child but words of wisdom coming to you all right <laughs> so I have a couple of um whips also that I wanted to show you again these are all knitted whips I have a couple of uh, crochet whips but we're gonna save some stuff for next time right because you can't just bring everything out today okay we have a lot going on and trust me we're gonna get through everything hopefully you know because I gotta go pick up my babies too so I can't just be here all day talking to you all right I love you but I can't be here all day <laughs> right um all right so the first whip remember i was saying to you um uh, that the felix sweater was the first sweater that i actually completed so i want to show you that the first sweater that i actually started this is the autumn league pullover by two of wands okay and i'm making that sweater out of red heart dreamy Red Heart Dreamy, right? Red Heart Dreamy. Red Heart Dreamy. And this color is gray, okay? And this is acrylic. This is acrylic. Yes, this is 100% acrylic. Red Heart Dreamy, okay? So Red Heart Dreamy is what they call brushed acrylic because it has that, that halo because they, they brushed it. I don't know why they didn't just comb it, but they brushed it. So it gets that halo and then trying to frog that it's a hot mess okay so <laughs> if you ask me why i didn't finish the sweater or frog it back it's because it's a hot mess to frog and i've done it already trying to get back to where i made the mistake because i could not understand the mistake right so this sweater i'm not happy with there's a lot of issues I don't, this is the back of the sweater I don't know if you can see all of that drama back there. Can you see all of that drama puckering and confusion? What is all of that? What is that? I don't know. I don't know how it got there. I don't know. So now that I better understand knitting, <laughs> my ink, my um, thoughts are to rip it out. And if I so choose, start it again or save the yarn for something else. Because... Uh, I'm just very upset with it. I was thinking to just go ahead and finish it anyway. It's acrylic, steam it. This will flatten out. But it looks to me like it's pulled. I don't like it. I don't think it will flatten out to that extent to where it's not noticeable. So uh, I think that'll be a waste of time, right? So you still have to pick up stitches for the neckline. So don't look at the neckline. It's not like huge and crazy. That's how the neckline is <clears throat> until you pick up stitches to bring it in and do the rib collar right so that's the front in the front right here um i'm trying to get you to see this right here that little v that's supposed to be cute <laughs> that is not cute that's not cute 
that is all kind of messed up that be so that's why this is the first sweater that i did not finish <laughs> because i was very confused as to why the v did that i don't know what i did or what i missed or whatever i could not figure it out so i kept going why i kept going i don't know right i don't know but i'm thinking that this might be frog because the yarn i still like the yarn it's soft acrylic yarn and i'm thinking because i got gauge the sweater is actually a dk weight sweater or a sport weight sweater but i got gauge with the needles that i i use these are signature needles uh us 10 six millimeter so these are signature needles us 10 um and that's my first pair of signature needles i have bought that just to try them out to see what the hype was about you know and it's a it's a knitting needle <laughs> i didn't really see anything fancy i still prefer my chiago's um red lace over you know i mean it's nice it's prestigious i guess to have but i didn't think anything fancy about the cord uh as is um that kind of cord i was still i still prefer chiago cords give me that cord any day if they put that cord on this needle and change the tip maybe you know i think i'm not sure if it's a midi tip or the stiletto i think this is the stiletto tip for the signature i'm not 100 percent, but um let me see i will um definitely try to see about uh testing out another one if this is the stiletto tip try the midi tip just to see if there's a difference in that other than that uh if you like them, you like them. No problem with that. You spend your money on what you want to spend it on. You working for that. <clears throat> right? I'm not working for it. You working for your money. You spend your money on what you want to spend your money on. Okay? All right. So the next um, whip I have is also a sweater um, whip. This was a test knit. I did not finish it. I'm still working on it. But I'm looking to finish it because I love it. I love the pattern. I love the yarn. I'm very, very pleased with it. And this, I just want to, sorry for my bending now. My stuff is on the floor. All right. Um, so the name of this pattern is the Sarah Pullover. Again, by Rachel Reese. You're going to hear Rachel Reese's name for a while, uh, for a good time, a good while, excuse me, because I test it for her a lot. You know, she's, She's good people. She's like genuinely good people. And genuine good people are hard to come by, you know. And I was very fortunate to have met her. And trust me, I, I, I'm very pleased to say that she's my friend, you know. So she allows me to test it for her. Even if I don't get the opportunity to complete <laughs> the test it. It's just a hat or whatever. But she is happy to have me in her test group whenever she have a test it come up. And I'm happy to lend my needles and my yarn to her patterns, okay? Sorry, my eyes itching again. Eczema. <laughs> so, this sweater is made out of Sugar Plum Circus yarn. Sugar Plum Circus. That yarn, look at that. You see that? That's beautiful. That is called Leaky Cauldron. Leaky Cauldron. That's a reference to Harry Potter. Beautiful yarn. It's so soft. It's so squishy. This is a Merino DK, 100% superwash Merino, 231 yards of beautifulness. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. She now, this young lady right here, she dyed some nice yarn. And that yarn is so soft. So soft. Oh, my God. That's my first time um, using this yarn is for this test knit that's the yarn caked up mm -hmm. so i got you see two yarn cakes going because i'm doing helical knitting for this uh sweater because again it is indie dyed yarn so you know the colorway can be off because um even if it's in the same dye pan apparently you can still get some color variations and it can be noticeable and i want none of that so I will do the helical knitting 
as I go. And I will enjoy it until I get my finished product. <laughs> All right. So that is the yarn. This now is the sweater. The sour, the Sarah pullover. Okay. And I love, I love that. I love how that's coming out. Isn't that beautiful? This testament is over. Okay. And I believe the pattern is, is up now, if I'm not mistaken. You see that brio center? Oh, that's beautiful. Love it. Love that squishy brio center. It's beautiful. And then you have the back. Look how that color. That color is just, oh my God, it's all that. It's all that. That yarn is hot. It's all that. <laughs> it's all that. So I'm working on this slowly. I, this is one knit that I am enjoying. I am enjoying. When I tell you I'm enjoying it, I am enjoying it. You know, I'm enjoying how this sweater is coming out. I'm enjoying working with this yarn. I love it so much. I love it, love it, love it. All right. And that sweater is by uh, Rachel Reese. Okay. So that's um, another whip. This next whip is also a pattern by Rachel Reese. This is her most recent one. The <laughs> is a pattern test as well. The test was actually finished today, but um, some people asked for extension. Um, so I'm grateful for that. But she said that the, you know, the test is um, officially over today, but the release is later on. So we still got time to finish. So this now <coughs> yarn is by Brooklyn Tweed. This is Brooklyn Tweed Arbor, Arbor yarn. And this color is Porter, Porter. And this is also a DK weight yarn. And it's 145 yards of, what is that? 100% American tar heave wool, okay? I don't have no problem um, knitting or crocheting with black. I know some people say that they do. I don't have any, I don't have that issue, you know, so there you go. I wanted to, okay, so this now is what I'm using for the color work. All right. Isn't that pretty? That's pretty. Look at that. That's so pretty. And this now is Fiber for the People. Fiber for the People. Tell me why I can't open this. I don't know. I want to say this says Noah. I'm not sure. Noah or Nash, one of them. But it's Fiber for the People. Her yarn is nice too. And this is 80% super washed merino, 20% nylon. And it's 400 yards of a finger run weight. And I think that says Noah. Is it Noah? I don't know what that says. It's blowing up. Child, help me. I don't know what that says. All right. Y'all don't know either because I can't get this to straighten out. All right. There you go. I think I want to believe it say Noah. I don't know. Don't look at my nails, child. Don't tell me nothing about my nails because I am a nurse. A nurse can't keep pretty nails because we got to wash our hands regular. So nails and nurse don't go together. All right? And I am a nurse. <laughs> so this sweater is still a whip, but I am on to the sleeve. So it's almost done. I'm hoping to finish by this weekend. All right, when I get those babies and get them settled, I will um, work on this uh, later tonight. So that's the color work right there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that's showing up pretty. I like that. Let's see, this is the, the body of the sweater now. She had you do a stretchy bind off of your choice. So I did, uh, is it Judy? Judy or Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And that came out very nice because... The, the stretch for the ribbon. It's a three inch ribbon. That ribbon was fighting with me, you know, but I won. <laughs> so that's the stretchy bind off that it had there on the uh, hem. And I got one sleeve in progress, right? So I'm decreasing every five stitches for 12 rounds. And then we do another set of color work on, that's my stitch on hold, my sleeve on hold. And then we, um, do another set of color work on the cuff and then we finish the cuff. So almost done. 
almost done. I'm really enjoying this too. Oh, look at that. That's going to look so cute. Look how cute it is. That's cute right now. <laughs> that is cute right now. That's right. <laughs> so I'm enjoying this too. It's almost done. And again, I'm happy for that. Okay. So the next one um, that I'm doing is also a sweater. Okay. Hohi uh, Locatelli, Locatelli. Every year she has a uh, knit along. Right? So this year I joined her knit along too. And that's my first time uh, joining her knit along. So her knit along, um, you choose one of her patterns. And she has plenty. And because I was doing so many different test knits, I just wanted to choose something simple. Uh, from her, I didn't want anything uh, too challenging. I just didn't want anything I had to piece together and sew and all that because my mattress stitch game, I'm still working on that. Mattress stitch, just like purling, is of the devil. I don't know <laughs> who invented that. Mattress stitch, the devil's work. Purling, the devil's work. Until you get it. Until you get it and you understand it. Let me show you the yarn. So this now, I'm using uh, one, two, three, four colors with this one. All right. And this is, all right. So this now, the first color is Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. All right. Classic Wool, Classic Wool Worsted. And this is called Aaron Tweed. Okay, and this is a hundred hundred uh, grams, ninety percent wool, seven seven percent acrylic, three percent viscose, and this is two hundred and ten yards of that wool. It is like a creamish. Oh, there you go. It's like a creamish color with some flecks in it to call itself tweed. Okay. Then next, this is also from the Crafters box. This is that charcoal gray I was telling y'all about. This is 100% Peruvian, Peruvian, Peruvian Highland wool. And it's 220 yards of that. All right. And this is the same thing, but in that lighter gray that I was mentioning to you all before. You see? All right. This now, and y'all of y'all getting knit crate and talking about y'all don't use y'all knit crate. Use y'all knit crate. That's some good yarn. Nick Crate got some good yarn. That's some good yarn. Stop, stop, stop hating on Nick Crate. Nick Crate got some good yarn. You know, that's why it's hard for me to cancel Nick Crate because that yarn is some good yarn. So this now is my Nick Crate yarn. My cake is falling apart a little bit. So it's not too pretty. Do not criticize the cake. <laughs> it's not about the cake. It's about the yarn. It's about the yarn color. Okay. Is that better? I think, yeah, that's... Mm. So this is more like a tealy green, leaning more greeny than tealy, you know? So it's like a tealy green. And this is um, Knitology Glowing Worsted in the Pachyderm colorway. And this is 40% Superwash Merino, 30% Silk, 30% Alpaca. And it's a worsted weight yarn. It's 150 yards. Okay. And here we this is a thing for real, child. This is a thing. So get that. I'm not doing all that. So just do your thing. Come on. Come on. All right. Are you doing it? I think you're doing it. I'm not sure. Maybe you're doing it. Can you tell? I, well, I just read it to you, anyway. So this is Knitology. <laughs> all right. That's some good yarn, okay? Use y'all Knit Crate yarns and stop giving it away. Y'all making Knit Crate feel bad, okay? But that's some nice yarn. So that's the three, the four colors that I got in my current sweater here. And uh, Hohe's um, knit along is finishing November 30th. So I'm hoping to be done either next week or I'm hoping next week or at least the week before the 30th. So that that way I can um, post my finished object picture in her thing. All right, so this is my super summer simple sweater. All right, super summer, super simple, super simple summer sweater. Child, it's a SS, four S's, four S's. You see, I'm down here. I just, uh, this is a split hem. 
So I just finished the front hem, right? And now I'm working on the back hem. But don't you love those colors? Look at that. That's the lighter gray. That's the white. Obviously, that's the teal. The white again. The darker gray. And it ends in the lighter gray. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. I love this sweater so much. I love it. I love it so much. I love it. Look at that sweater. I wish I could. Can I stand up and show you? I love it so much. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> I really enjoy this sweater too. Originally, originally the pattern is just two colors, but people striping crazy this sweater right here. Super Summer. Child, what's the name of the sweater? What's the name of the sweater, child? Lord Jesus. Super Summer. Super Simple. Mm, mm, mm. Super Simple Summer Sweater. That's how he right there in her super simple summer sweater as you can see she only did two colors right so the pattern if you're following uh the pattern to the t then you only do 24 24 stripes in between the colors so it's 24 24 24 but you know you do it how you want then you count your, your stripes the way you want to stripe so for me i'm doing 16 um, rounds in between each stripe. 16 rounds in between each stripe. I love this sweater so much. <laughs> I love it so much. I can't wait for it to be finished. Oh my God. I love it so much. You know, I love it so much. I have a another um, Knitology worsted from uh, Knit Crate called Beta. Oh my God. That's that burgundy one. Oh my God, that burgundy is so pretty. I was thinking of putting it in this first, but I know I would need that to shine by itself. So that will wait for another sweater that um, that 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 will allow that yarn to shine. Cause that's some beautiful uh, yarn. That's a pretty. I love that color too. Beta. Oh my God, that's a nice yarn. A nice knit crate yarn. Okay, so that is, that's all the sweaters right there. For now, anyway. All right. Then, I have another um, whip that was also a, um, a um, knit, uh, test knit. And this one was also by the same Crystal Hyatt from Millie's. Millie's Knit Design, Crystal Hyatt. She's so nice. Too. She's a very nice lady as well. I used to, when I first started knitting, test knitting for her, I was on, um, it's like a, a test knit site called um, Yarn, Yarn Pond, P-O-N-D, Yarn Pond. And that's where I first started test knitting for her from there. So... I'm just getting the yarn so I can show you what yarns I'm using. This. So this um is a shawl. This testament is a shawl. And it's a big shawl. I chose to do the big one because why not, right? Why not, child? Do the big one. Do the big one. Go big or go home. That's what they say. That's what I heard. So you can do that or not do that. But I chose to do that. And you know what I did? I didn't finish. I didn't finish. I ran out of yarn, all kind of drama. But I got the yarn and I persevered at this point forward. I'm trying to find. All right, here you go. Oh, the label is inside the yarn, child. All right, so the first yarn is from Expression Fiber Arts, okay? This is one of them. The other two colors are inside of the shawl. Those are finished. Okay, so this is the first Color. I don't know if you, okay that's you can not too much of a glare all right so it's like a green you know with um, uh, tweed flex and like a lighter green as well this is called deep deep sea blue it's a twisted tweed spark sport weight 42% fine merino wool 43% superwash merino wool 15% Donegal and it's 384 yards, okay? 
and it came as a set. It was a set of three. So it was this one plus the two others that are inside the actual shawl. And it was called Daring, the three together. Um, and it came as 1,152 yards at that point. So then all of that went into the shawl. And I ran out of this color because this is at the bottom of the shawl. Obviously, the shawl got bigger and it needed more yarn. So that's what happened then. I had to, I lost that uh, yarn chicken race and had to wait to get more yarn. And the yarn came and I started that again. The second uh, color in the yarn, in the uh, shawl, because there's some eyelets, so the eyelets is a different color than the actual garter stitch shawl portion. The second color is the um, Uru yarn, or URU yarn from Knit Crate. This is URU yarn, Silk DK, and the colorway is called Topoli. 85% merino wool, 15% silk, DK weight, and it's 300 yards. And I have two skeins of this here to do the, because um, you have to do a knitted, um, what is it that I knitted um, the eyelet portion at the end? Let me see if I can. I'm watching the time so because I gotta get my kids y'all. All right, so if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so you have to do a knit on lace edge. So that uh, color that I just showed you, the topo leaf for knitology, will be that. Okay, so this also is a test knit that finished. So this is the picture of the shawl. The name of the shawl is Whisper. All right, it's beautiful. All right, I love those two colors she chose, and I love my colors that I chose too. All right, and you see this lace edge here. That's what the uh, gray will be. All right, so I'm almost, uh, I'm almost at the. Where am I? I think I have one more garter stitch section to go. I have one more. I'm finishing the garter stitch section that I'm on now. Getting ready to move on to the next eyelet section. And then I have one more garter stitch section. One more garter and one more eyelet section. Two more, sorry. I'm reading this. Two more garter stick sections and one more eyelet section before I move on to the knit on knit on lace edge. So I'm excited about that to get um, to that portion. Oh Lord. And of course, why wouldn't I be in the middle of a row? Why not? Why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> why wouldn't you be in the middle of a row? So I'm just gonna because I was taking it with me when I was going voting. So I was knitting in the car because at first I wasn't sure what was happening as far as on the line. I just was not about to stand up on the line and not be doing nothing. So the shawl goes like this, right? So that's the top of the shawl. You can see that it's going from light to dark. All right. And this is where I am now, the green section. You see that? I love it so much, love it so much. And these are the colors. I don't, I, they didn't, um, when she gave the, um, this bump, I'm praying that that bump block out because that bump is aggravating me. So this is the eyelet sections. And you see that's the, that's like a bluey, beigey color. And then it went into this color here. It faded into that color. And that color is like a darker, bluey, beigey color. And then we picked up the green. And now we just work in the green. We work in the green until we get to all the taupey color. All right. So I hope y'all like that. I like it. I think that came out very pretty. I like that the light portion is at top, at the top, and I like that at the bottom. You know. So I'm excited to see the knitted cast on and block it and finally put the finished picture up so that Crystal can see it too. You know. So. That's that. And then the last um, whip that I'm going to share with you today is called the Winter Doldrums. 
um, Shaw, you know. This young lady is a podcaster also. And she actually just came back to podcast and she was having some issues in her life. And I felt for you can, there was one podcast I was watching. What is her name? There was one podcast of hers that I was watching and you could see just from the um, emotion that she was going through that, that um, she truly was having a hard time in her life at that time. I'm just trying to see if I can find the podcast for you. And I felt for her because you could see it, you know, the way that she did it. And this is is actually the, um, she had did the podcast and actually was going along making up this particular pattern, you know. And she came on, she was like, oh, all right, all right, you know. And she was like, um, y'all want to see how I, how I get to a pattern? You want to see how I... Uh, go through the process and all you know, so she you can see the stress and you can kind of see the pain That she was going through she was going through a lot And she came back recently and she made it known that she was going through a lot, you know And that she just could not she didn't have the mental space to deal with um, Podcasting and whatever she was going through in her life at that time. So I was truly glad to see her um, Come back because I felt like you know, her, the content that she was doing and the patterns that she has, they were very nice and they they were worth it. And, you know, and her, her content was worth it as well, you know. So it was very nice to see her come back. I think I'm going to have to go ahead and try to find that later if I can. But now, because I don't have the time on my side. But very nice young young lady. Her name is Marsha Ibuku Ibuki I B U K I, and this is called the Winter Doldrums Shawl. You know, and she said that she basically made up this shawl because sometimes in the winter she gets depressed, just like anybody else. You know, she feels down a little bit, so she made this shawl up as she was uh, filming herself doing her podcast and that I remember that as being one of her last podcasts that she had you know and it was very uh here we go fairy little fairy f-a-i-r-y little l-i-t-t-l-e fairy little and she's back you know and I had sent her like a word of encouragement on her um you know how you do the comments I sent her a word of encouragement and she had um, responded back to me on that, you know. And that's when um, I said, oh, I wonder if she's coming back. And then like a couple of days later, she brought out um, a new podcast, Fairy Little. So go and um, look at that. Uh, she, she's very, I like her. I like her, you know. And I felt for her when she was going through. So Marsha is her name, Ibuki. Ibuki. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But this is, again, the Winter Doldrums Shawl. And when she had put that out, I had printed it out. And I said I would make that, you know, because sometimes I feel down in the winter, too. And I started it, not because I feel down, but because I had some pretty yarn. <laughs> that, and it's only called for one skein. And I said, let me see how that yarn will look. Because it's a, um, it's a, a gradient yarn, an ombre yarn. And this yarn is by, it's gray. Gray is one of my colors, child. So you're going to see a lot of gray for me sometimes, okay? So this yarn is um, Freer yarn. I don't know if you know about Freer yarn. Freer yarn is some nice yarn. And this is an ombre yarn. The color is called Quartz. I'm not sure if she's still making this particular color. Uh, it's a fingering Oh, and it's actually a, a yarn for a shawl. I didn't realize that, but it's fingering and the pattern calls for one skein of fingering. So it's 430 yards fingering and it's made from 100% U.S. cruelty-free merino. And it's called Freya, F-R-E-I-A. So this yarn, I had got, I want to believe that I got this yarn in like a um thrift store bag i do not i know i didn't buy it 
right? But the price tag said that it cost $39 for this one um, skein of yarn. And I believe it because it's some nice yarn. And if you go on her website, that's her. If you go on her website, if you go on her website, you'll find that her prices for her yarn are up there because the yarn is beautiful. The colors are beautiful. The yarn, I'm trying to make you see. The yarn is beautiful and the colors are beautiful and she has a wide variety. Freya apparently was the name of her dog or something and the dog died and she named the, um, the company after the dog, you know? And why not your dog in your company? <laughs> do you, child, do you, okay? And that is the, the yarn there, it's gray and there's a gradient, you see, it's an ombre. And her her uh, her ombres are beautiful. They come out as they should, a nice slow gradual um, ombre effect. So this now is the start of my winter doldrum shawl. I'm pulling the yarn from the outside because I only started it. Today is what um, Tuesday. I think I only started it Sunday night. I was tired, and I took it with me today to work on it. See how much work I actually got done on it. <laughs> These are my Shiagu needles there, you know? So that's my, my one to do. So the start is gonna be gray, and then as I continue, it'll get um, to the center part, which is exciting because I want to see that, you know? This, um, I wanna show you my little bag because this bag is cute. This bag I got from Oink Pigments. Oink Pigments, they had their, um, I wanna say 10th anniversary, I believe. And they had like an anniversary um, package where you got um, two colorways. Uh, you could choose either DK or um, fingering. I chose DK. And they had, was it two or three? Two or three project bags to go with the yarn. And you was able to choose which one you want. So I got this one called Pigs uh, Flying or Pigs in Airplanes. I thought that was too cute that every time I look at it and make me laugh, I'm happy for that. <laughs> it's, it makes me laugh every time I see it. So I'm happy about seeing that and smiling. <laughs> All right. I tend to buy a lot of stuff that just make me happy and why not? Why not? Right? I forgot to show y'all the bags for the other stuff. I'll do that real quick. Okay. So that's Oink's Pigment. And this is Fate Thread. This is Fate Thread. This is a Harry Potter design. I don't know if you can see the uh, Deathly Hollows there. And the um, Deathly Hollow, you see? Deathly Hollow bag. This is also Fate Thread. This is her jumbo bag. Fate, F-A-T-E, Thread, T-H-R-E-A-D-S. And this is her jumbo bag. It's black with hearts. Then we have, and we're going to bow in silence, fringe supply bag, my town bag, right, in burgundy with the wax, outside the wax canvas. And this is, is this awesome grandma? Who is this? Oh, this is my lady here. This lady makes some nice bags too. On Jordan's Creek, she's on Etsy, on O-N Jordan, J O R. D A N Creek C R E E K. She makes some nice bags too. This is her extra large bag and this holds a sweater in it very well. She makes some nice bags. And that last bag was just a bag that I got off of um, Zoo Lily. You know Zoo Lily? Zoo Lily, you get some nice stuff off of there. And this is a scout bag. And that's just a pretty bag I had bought. And I was, I forgot what I bought it for. But whatever it was, I didn't use it for that purpose. So it became a, a sweater bag. <laughs> so I just want to go real quick over my um, my um, yarn that I got. And I want to talk about this particular yarn that I got from um, Barrett Woolco, which is, again, Susan B. Anthony's um, company. So this yarn that I got is because I'm interviewing yarn if you will, <laughs> to make a sweater, okay? So Pippin Pin, Pippin Pin, beautiful sweater. They have um, a package 
or what it got they call it slow release of patterns and it's like an ebook so she's releasing it slowly and the yarn is worsted weight it's a worsted weight sweater and when i show you the sweater you'll understand why i'm needing special yarn <laughs> so, this, so this is part of the happy mail okay this is part of the happy mail again excuse the um crinkling barrett wool co barrett barrett wool can you see there you go barrett wool co all right and that is susan b anthony company okay all right so i want to show you i want to show you i had got she also she has kits for um different kinds of stuffies or stuffed animals and stuff um elves and all this kind of different stuff she has on her thing so i missed out on this kit it had came back and i missed out on it so i was very upset but i was glad to see that she had like the little book with the story and everything that and also i believe it has the pattern in it that you can actually create the husband and wife uh team the husband and wife that's um pattern for that right and so that's the scan the swen swen scandinavian a knitted friend right so that's the booklet there and it comes with the story and the pattern and everything isn't that cute i think that's so cute but if you buy the kit you get all the yarn that go with that too so you can make that all together and that's your kit <laughs> right so now the pattern that i'm talking about that is also from Pippin Pin, is called Sabino Canyon Cardigan. And this, let's see, I don't know if you can, can you see it? But I love it. I love this sweater. As soon as I seen that on, on um, the Ravelry page, I was looking at, oh my God, I fell in love with that sweater. I don't want to um, give away any of the pattern. I just want to show you the, the sweater. You see, it got a toggle button, but you can choose your button, whatever button you want to put there, you know. So it's a it's a long um, cardigan, and it just looks so cozy and so nice. And I'm all about being cozy, child. I like to be cozy and comfortable. I tell you, and they got pockets, <laughs> and that's the those are the pictures right there with the pockets, and it shows the length of the sweater. You know, it's just it's just a nice sweater and it just look cozy. And I love that collar. You see how the collar comes over and it come down? It's like a cowl, a split cowl collar is what I would call that, you know? And I love that toggle button. And apparently it just has the one button, but I'm sure that if you know how to do buttonholes, put on your buttons, child. But that is uh, the purpose. That was the purpose for my purchase. And I said I needed to see and feel the yarn in person so that I can, um, you know, know for sure what I'm doing, right? So, do I need an excuse to buy? I don't need any excuse to buy yarn, but I bought it anyway. All right, so whatever, whatever. I hear you, yes, but whatever, still just the same. So, I got four different colors of the worsted weight yarn from um, Barrett Woolco. And this one is called Home Worsted Weight 100% American Wool. And it's 230 yards, okay? So this one is called Big Wool. Big Woods, excuse me. DL number six. I don't know what DL number six is. But I love that. Isn't that a nice green? Oh my God, that's such a nice green. You know? That's a nice green. So that's a possibility. Because I, I like green too. <laughs> I like green, I like gray, I like black, I like burgundy and those rose colors. All right, and this one is called Scout, also DL number six. I don't know what that is. This is more like a, a tealy green. I love that. I love that. And then now we got um, Pepin. Pepin now is also DL number six, whatever that means, but it's more of a more of a plum not like a deep plum but a plum purplish 
color. That's beautiful. I love that. And this one, now, this one had me intrigued. I wasn't sure what was happening. So that's why I needed to get this so I could see it in person. And it looked more navy blue than it does black. But it was like stressing me out on the website because I could not tell. So this is called Huron, H-U-R-O-N. You see what I'm talking about? It's doing it right there too. You see how it looked like it got a sheen? Like it's a, a mix between, I don't know, like some purple and there's navy blue and black. That's what I'm seeing in there on the camera. Like purplish and navy blue. And then you come back here and it's black and it look more black. And you go closer in the light and look more navy blue and some purple. I don't know, but that was stressing me out. <laughs> As to why this got bought. But I'm thinking that between this and this i'm not sure which one i'm thinking this might be the winner for that sweater and this might be a close contender and these other two we're gonna have to find something else to do with y'all you know but that is the happy mail from from um barrett wolf all right so then i also have some happy mail from Nick Crate. I love Nick Crate. Nick Crate yarn is nice yarn. So don't hate on Nick Crate. I got the that super chunky yarn that they got. There's a blanket pattern and a sweater pattern that I said I wanted to either uh if the sweater pattern don't work out, that blanket pattern would be my fallback. So like I said, I got the lighter gray and also the darker gray. And I got the darker gray in my membership kit as well. Um so I'm getting um, petal, which is the pinkish color. So again, if this if the sweater don't look good, it will be that blanket. So I have porcelain, porcelain, and I have Shiraz in the city. I, I like that color. I like both of these colors, and together they work. You know, so I, the pink is still on its way, and I will do that when I when they get there and I will see which one is which. So yes, I went back to um, Michael's as one does and I had a coupon because I did and they had a sale because that's what they do. <laughs> so I took advantage of both, right? I got some Red Heart Unforgettable. I'm in the um, Mary Maxim uh, Knit and Crochet Club and this month, the Crochet Club, was it this month? In October, the Crochet Club had this beautiful um, shawl pattern, beautiful shawl pattern. And the color is not for me altogether, although it's a pretty color still. I still found a color that I like better and unforgettable, so I got that color. And this color is called Echo. 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 Look at that. Echo. Okay, and Echo is 100% acrylic and 270 yards, you know, but beautiful. Echo, Echo. All right. I also, because <laughs> I was there, I got another set of um, Unforgettable, which was also pretty. And because they were both in my face at the time and just screaming at me, what could I do? I couldn't, I could not, I could not honestly make a good choice. So what did I do? I just, just went on and brought both of them home with me. So this is color, it's called Gossamer. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Beautiful Gossamer. Look at that, beautiful. So I got as many as I needed <laughs> to do that shawl. And I also got, I don't know if y'all remember the last time I was doing my video, I had got, um, I had told y'all about me needing to get some more yarn to do a blanket that was on a label. So I went ahead and got that yarn, okay? Was it this one? I can't remember if it was this one or that one, but either way, I got both sprinkle yarn. This one I had already, this one, I just got it because I love it. Purple Velvet, love that one. Love it, love it. So that's why I got that. This one I got because I think this is the one for the blanket, and this is called Dewberry Plum. Dewberry Plum. So those two I got. And you know, again, I was I was in Michaels. I was there. Right. So 
I was telling y'all that I needed to make a blanket to replace my son's blanket, my oldest son blanket day. Somehow I got this whole, I don't know, in there. So I got four of these um, Karen cakes. Isn't that blue pretty? This is called blueberry cheesecake. I just love those. Look at that. So I got four of these to make him a blanket. And I seen a pattern for a blanket called Jacob's Ladder. So that might be Jacob's Ladder, you know. And there you go. I also got some more yarn to do um, a couple of more hats for Hat Not Hate. And this is the Craft Smart Tweed in navy. So that's that. Craft Smart Tweed in navy. Which is nice. I got that one particular because I seen Pam from Pamela's Knit and Crochet Corner work up a hat in that. And that, that looked good. And I also got this one. Lion Brown Heartland yarn in Olympic in Olympic and this is also like a a blue marled type yarn you know but also to do more hats for hat not hate and then I just got this one because I like it and this is lion brand heartland yarn again and this is called great smoky mountain and that's a gray a gray marled yarn and all three of those are um, size four medium weight yarn this is also a size four and these are the chunky yarns here size six super bulky okay uh, and this is a four too the unforgettable everybody know that Un unforgettable is a four right excuse me a minute i'm gonna gun down a little bit more so i can get my things now um also <laughs> at michael's right they have anniversary cakes they still got them it was a sale i had a coupon <laughs> so i got one more anniversary <laughs> and this one is blackberry surprise i love that color that may also become a uh jacob ladder blanket too because i have this is number two for this one but I love that particular colorway. <laughs> um, I don't know if you all ever heard of Deal Genius. Deal Genius, every now and again, they have uh, some, um, what is the word? It's discounted yarn, but also yarn that is discontinued, right? And every now and again, they surprise you and they have Lion Brand Wool Spun, right? The first time I ever found out about uh, Deal Genius, I think either Crystal at Bag O' Day or um, what's Mama name? Mama, um, what's her name? Penley, Penley Ann, Penley Ann Creations. Mama Penny. She tends to do all kind of, um, you know, yarn hauls and, and make you aware of different, um, things going on as far as yarn sales. So either one, either between the two of them, I had um, found out about Dill Genius, regardless of either one of them. And I so happened one day to look on there and they had Lion Brand Wool Spun. And so I had to get me some Lion Brand Wool Spun because you just can't get it. This is color violet, okay? Violet. I don't want to take it out of the bag because again, I'm I'm moving if I didn't tell y'all before so I'm trying to get stuff packed up So if it's in the bag, it kind of stays in the bag. So Violet Very nice and I got um I got nine balls <laughs> I got nine balls of that Just in case that's this that's all I'm saying about that. Just just in case. All right <laughs> I also wanted to share with y'all a couple of um, uh, books that I had got also. And I have one more, uh, Happy Mail. I had ordered a bag from um, Laurel, Rail from the Dabbling Hook. She she make nice bags also. Rail from the Dabbling Hook. Who don't know about her hook dabbling all over the place? Her hook does be dabbling, all right? So that's Rail from the Dabbling Hook. 
And every time I order from her, I enjoy the uh, lavender sachet that she put in the pouch. Now she has a, a, a option for you to choose whether or not you want it. So for me, I will always choose to have it because I enjoy the scent of it. It doesn't bother me. Look at this bag. Oh my God. Oh my God. Love it, love it, love it. What's this? Oh, I guess that's the sachet. That's how she's doing it now. Because before she was putting it in um, one of those. Oh my God, what is that bag called? The little, the little see-through bag that that um, them people, Lovecraft, send their bags in. Lord help me. Oh, look at that. Look at that. A little crocheted heart with the stitch marker. Very nice, Rail. Very nice. Thank you. How pretty is that? How pretty is that? Those are um, hard work colors. You know, this is um, Gryffindor. I am a Ravenclaw. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> I am a Ravenclaw. But she didn't know that. So God bless her. And I thank you anyway. Okay. And she sent me some tea. Green tea with pomegranate. That is nice. That is nice. And I like me some herbal tea. Herbal tea is a nice thing. It helps you to relax and clear your mind. You know, herbal tea. All right. And then now we're looking for the, the bag, right? I know y'all looking for the bag. Just hold on one second for me, please. I'm trying to get it together. Here we go right there. Dun, da, da, da. How pretty is that? When I seen the fall leaves colors, oh my goodness. It was just so pretty. It was too pretty to leave. Too pretty to leave. And that's the inside with the pocket. Can you see the inside with the pocket? inside with the pocket all right and that's it that looked big enough to hold a shawl or the a sweater too that looked like it could hold a sweater too for me you know because i tend to cake up my yarn and i leave i don't know some people say they don't but i leave all of my um yarn my pattern pencil notions all of that stick right inside of that bag until i'm finished with the project you know so that that way i know where stuff is <laughs> I will lose it. I will lose it. <laughs> okay, and the last, uh, oh, it's not last. I just have one more, two more things after this. And this is just a couple of books that I found on uh, Amazon that I thought were intriguing because I started to get into uh, mosaic crochet. Um, a young lady by the name of Tina, T-I-N-N-A. She does mosaic crochet. Tina, and I can't pronounce her um, last name, child. That that last name is just trying. But she's a beautiful soul. And this is the... Can you see? I don't know if you can see. There we go. Okay, so see? Right there, Tina. Can you see her name? Tina, that's her right there. Tina, blah, blah, blah. But she's a beautiful soul. And I was taking part in this um, crochet along. The Queen Cow, that's the name of the blanket that we was making. And I'm almost I'm I'm almost done with part one. The crochet along is finished. It was like five parts. And she did a tutorial video, a full in-depth tutorial to video for each part of that um, blanket. Awesome. Awesome. You want to learn how to do um, mosaic crochet? That young lady right there will show you how to get it done. So because of her, I found this book on Amazon with uh, mosaic crochet or tapestry crochet bags. And I'm like, that don't look much different from the um, mosaic crochet. Although I think these are more single crochet stitches and you're carrying along carrying the yarn along, you know, to form the item, you know, but it's still beautiful and it comes out with a beautiful picture on the end. So that's one. And then I got another one for tapestry crochet, also for um, bags. It says it's tapestry, tapestry crochet and more. Granny squares, lacy stars, and 3D flowers, you know. So I got that book also because I just, I was just like, wow, that's pretty. And I want to learn those kind of stitches. Why not? 
Why not? We got one life to live, and we's in a pandemic. Now, I'm going to show you this book. I don't want you to think nothing of me. My baby days are behind me, but I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I thought that that little baby was so pretty, and I needed that book, you know, so I can make some baby things. And look at that baby. I don't know if it's the same baby. I don't think so. I'm not sure. Because I keep looking at the baby in the front and the back. I don't know. But both babies is pretty. If it's one baby, it's a pretty baby. If it's two, they both pretty. Pretty babies. <laughs> Alright, so I got that, books. And then the last thing I want to share with you guys before I get out of here is my Letha Co. Advent calendar for Christmas. I got that. I used to get the Letha Co. Um, club, monthly club, you know, but I'm starting to cut down on the clubs because, again, I'm moving and um, I don't need stuff coming here that I'm not here to receive. So I said I will start stuff back up uh, slowly when we get settled. So that's not open yet, and I'll open that um, on another video, you know. I just wanted to show that to y'all, but right now, I'm going to go because I got to get my babies. I think that was a lot. This is over an hour, you know. And I wasn't here for a while, right? What am I, like two weeks, three weeks, I think, for, since the last time I made up a thing. This morning I had to call out because I'm a home care nurse, you know, and um, my car wasn't acting right. So I had to take the car to get seen, and thank God, it just was something minor and uh, my mechanic my mechanic is an awesome guy god bless him and he was able to fix it and have me on my way and i give god thanks for him um you know so that's why i was able to find time today to do this video you know i was doing some work i took a break and i said you know what let me podcast because i'm home by myself and that's a rarity you know i said let me um take a time and do this podcast because I've been wanting to do it. As you can see, I was accumulating, accumulating stuff to get it done. You know, I'm drinking some orange juice out of my grocery girl's mug. <laughs> you know, and no, excuse me, not orange juice, apple juice. And um, right now, I'm just going to clean up a little bit and get out of here and go get my children from school. It was nice to spend time with you all. I, I hope that you all enjoyed what it is that I showed you. Um, I pray that you will leave me kind comments. And I hope to see you all again the next time I put out a, a video. You know, I hope all is well with you and in your family and your household. May God bless you and keep you. And vote, please. Vote. Because that's what we need today. We need you to vote. Vote, vote, vote. Vote, please. Thank you. I voted. It's your turn. Make sure you do that. People bled and died, suffered and sacrificed to make sure that we can do this in peace. Do it. Do it. No matter what your political stance is, just vote. Just vote. Just do it. Just do it. All right? You all be blessed in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day. Be safe. Be safe. Be well. Wear your mask and wash your hands. We are in a pandemic. All right. <laughs> and I will see you all next time. Bye.